Well, then what's the purpose of grounding? That is what we really need to talk about. Here is a, a little snippet that I took out of Industrial Power Systems Handbook by, by a gentleman named Beeman who wrote this in 1952. This is one of the chapters. I think it's chapter 5. It says this. The word grounding is commonly used in electrical power systems to cover both system grounding and equipment grounding. Okay, so now, make a note here. Whatever, is that number five? You guys making notes? Anybody keeping yeah. track of these yeah, things? It's number five. Is that number five? So number five is that we have system grounding and equipment grounding. Okay? So now we got to figure out, well, what the heck is system grounding? What's equipment grounding? All right. Now, there are two types of systems. You have an ungrounded system. Let's take a look at this. Take a look at the secondary winding. Again, you are assumed, taking this course, that you understand electrical theory. This is a system. If you take a look at this system, the system secondary is insulated, and these conductors themselves are all insulated, and there is no fault. None of these conductors are connected to any equipment. That means that this system is ungrounded. The system winding, the actual trans winding, it's not connected to anything that could be an extension to the earth. In other words, it's not connected, Scott, right, to the enclosure that has a connection to a conductor, that has a connection to the earth. So therefore, that system is not grounded. Okay. Well, then there's no grounding of an ungrounded system. But we're talking about, Mike, we said, okay, we're talking about system grounding and ungrounding. Well, in system grounding, you could have an ungrounded system. That's system grounding, right? Because it's an ungrounded system. Now, let's go to the next one. Yeah, but what are the problems with ungrounded systems? See, there's a problem with an ungrounded system is that equipment can easily be damaged from transient overvoltages caused by indirect lightning and restriking ground faults. Now, if you heard what I just said, you should have no clue what I'm talking about. But take a look at the next slide. Overvoltage is explained clearly in this book, Industrial Power Systems Handbook by Bierman, and I just ordered this online. It's a 1952 book, and the books that were written in the 40s and the 50s, engineering books and those that, man, some of that stuff was just golden. And in this particular book, here's what he says. He says, overvoltage sources. There are many varied sources of overvoltage of sufficient magnitude to be damaging to the installation of AC industrial power distribution systems. In this chapter, the mechanisms of which the prominent overvoltages are created will be described and prevented measurements su measures suggested. Treatment of the following will be included. Static. Well, static electricity, you need to ground that. Physical contact with higher voltage line. What do you do? Resonant effect with series inductive capacitor circuits called ferro resident. Repeating Intermittent short circuits, that's the restriking ground faults, switching surges, force zero current interrupting. I have no clue what most of that is even talking about because, it, because it's the problems associated with ungrounded systems. So let's go back to the graphic here. So if you go to an ungrounded system, you have problems. And so what Beam, Beeman is saying is that, listen, you know, we started the industry with ungrounded systems, and we got just a lot of problems with overvoltage. So he suggests what you need to do is you need to go to a grounded system. All right, let's talk about a grounded system. Now, a grounded system, take a look at this winding. Here's a Y secondary. It's insulated conductors, and all the conductors leaving the windings are all insulated, okay? Except, look right here. We take the actual winding itself. We run a wire down the grounding electrode conductor over to a structural steel which is ultimately connected to the earth. So now we've taken this system and we grounded it. Now, why do you ground a system? You ground a system because Beeman explained these eight things, including lightning and all these different things that can take place, whatever they happen. And you can have an overvoltage on the insulated system that's not grounded, and this capacitive charge is induced energy. All that stuff that's on those conductors, there could be a problem that there's going to be failure rate of equipment, so you ground a system. So you say, well, why would you not want an ungrounded system? There's, there's reasons that you have ungrounded systems, and there's reasons why you don't want an ungrounded system. So I'm not going to get into systems, but pretty much for today's installations, we have grounded systems because they found the problem with ungrounded systems. We want to ground a system. All right, let's move on here. So a system is grounded. Take a look right here. A lightning event outside strikes. It induces energy. It brings in energy into the building, it expands and it collapses that energy. That will put 
it will push those electrons in that building on those insulated conductors. That energy is trying to get to the earth, and if you don't provide a path to the earth, you're going to be damaging equipment. That's what Beeman was explaining back in that book that we talked about there. So take a look here. If we ground the system, then that induced energy on all those conductors is going to come back to the system, and it will use that grounding electric conductor and get to the earth to be able to dissipate that, that, that magnetic pulse of energy. We're not talking about clearing a fault. That's why the code says, why is the, what is the largest conductor required to a, to a ground rod? The answer in 25066A is what? Six gauge. So if you have a 2,000 amp service and you're using two ground rods as your electrode, what size do you need? Six gauge. Why? Because we're just trying to bleed off this magnetic pulse of energy to the earth so that we can have this system so that it doesn't have an over voltage condition so that it doesn't get damaged. But watch the sizing, rather the routing of the grounding electric conductor. Look at this graphic right here. The grounding electric conductor, it's a note, informational note, and it tells us this, that that conductor should not be any longer than necessary and we should not have any unnecessary bends. If you know anything about surge protection, you want the wires to be what? As short as possible. See, lightning is a high frequency DC pulse of energy. So it's high frequency DC pulse of energy going one way real fast. Well, what we want to do is have that wire as short as possible. Because see, inductive reactance is 2 pi FL. F is the frequency. You go from 60 hertz to let's say 10,000 hertz or 20,000 hertz. Well, now that wire had a certain amount of resistance. The inductive reactance on that wire added to the resistance. The impedance on that wire is astronomical. See, what you don't want is a long grounding electroconductor going to some great ground. You might have a great ground that's say 100 feet away, a well casing. A well casing is 100 feet away. Man, you're not going to get a better connection to the earth than a well casing that's 100 feet in the ground. I mean, come on. That's the whole purpose of it. There's a, there's, there's a terminal on the earth to go to. The problem is you've got to run 100 feet of wire. You run 100 feet of wire and you're carrying high-frequency DC pulse to that well casing to get to the earth, you'd be better off running a six-gauge wire right there, 10 feet long, two ground rods, and then if you're talking about the purposes of grounding. So we got to understand, what is the purpose of grounding? Now, that has to do with system grounding. And Beeman said there's two types of grounding. There's system grounding, and there's equipment grounding. Let's move now over into equipment grounding. Now, it's really metal equipment grounding is what we're talking about. It's real simple. Metal parts of electrical equipment are grounded to reduce arcing within the building structure from induced voltage from indirect lightning. Now. Equipment grounding is different than system grounding. Electrically, it's the same. The wire looks the same. Here's what I'm talking about. You get a system which is insulated windings with insulated conductors inside of a building, and it's ungrounded. You have a lot of different nine or eight different conditions of overvoltage. It causes this high energy on these conductors. They end up destroying equipment. They found that out. Oh, man, that's a major problem. So we then go to what? We then go to system grounding. What is system grounding? You take these insulated systems and these insulated conductors. You make one connection from the XL terminal. You go to the earth. We can bleed off that energy. We're talking about conductors. You're not likely to kill anybody if you don't have proper system grounding because it's the equipment themselves is going to fail. But equipment grounding is different. Follow this concept. Take a building with all kinds of metal all over the building, steel, piping, electrical boxes. There's no conductors in there at all. And none of this piping in any way, none of this metallic parts, none of the metallic parts is connected to the earth. It's not grounded. A lightning event outside, it does what? It pushes those electrons on all those metal parts. Where is that energy trying to get to? It is a DC pulse, high frequency, high voltage, huge amount of energy that's trying to get to where? To the earth. If you don't make a connection to that, there might be some plumbing pipes in there or some other thing beside the electrical that has some connection to the earth. Inside the building, what happens then? There's arcing side flashes called. So this million volts of induced energy on this electrical system, metal parts, has no place to go to. And it says, hey, I'll just go over to that steel column or I'll go over to that plumbing pipe. While it's doing side flashing, it could go through something combustible. It could cause a fire. In addition, if you're in a building that has metal electrical systems and the equipment is not grounded, and you have a lightning event outside inducing huge amount of voltage, you happen to be standing next to something while the lightning strikes at that instant, you could have a side flash through you because you are the capacitor path over to the earth. So equipment grounding is absolutely critical that the metal parts of equipment, they're all what? Everything in the building is all connected together. Another word would be what? 
bonded together, and then we take all the metal parts and we do what with it? We make sure we go to the Earth at one spot and only one spot only. Take a look at this graphic. And how do we do that? Well, at the service. You run a grounding electric conductor right from that equipment, which is connected to the neutral, and you go to Earth. Or you got a remote building. You're running a feeder to a building, you do what? You run a grounding electric conductor from the equipment to the Earth. This is called equipment grounding, that we want to make sure that the equipment is connected to the Earth. Now, are we carrying fault current? Are we grounding because we're going to try to clear a fault? No. You can't clear a fault with grounding. It's the Earth. It, it's just a spot that you've, it's, it's a spot that you put DC high frequency pulse of energy just to the Earth one way. We want that wire to be what? As short as possible. We don't want a whole bunch of bends. And we want it to be right there. And so that is called the equipment grounding. Well, Mike, if I run PVC from the service to a remote building and I bring an equipment grounding conductor and PVC, do I still have to have a ground rod in the building? Of course. Understand something. What do we want to do with a grounding electric conductor as short as possible to an electrode? Not some wire inside of a raceway that goes 100 feet from one building to the other building. No, no, no. That's an equipment grounding conductor. Why do you have an equipment grounding conductor? That was to make it safe. It's your protective conductor. The Europeans label it as a PE, protective earth conductor. It's your protective conductor. So your green ground wire is your equipment grounding conductor because that was, I think, number, which one was the one about the clear fault? Was it number three? Have an equipment grounding conductor on our notes? Four number five. four. Four and five. Number four? Remove or de-energize the surface. So equipment grounding is to provide a path from the energy that's induced on the metal parts to the earth. And let me explain something that's really important to understand. Grounding is n electrical systems, according to NEC, is not for lightning protection. If lightning directly strikes an electrical system, whatever it does to it is what it does to it. And then you go and you fix it. The NEC is not a lightning protection standard. If you want to protect electrical equipment from a direct lightning strike, then you would put NFPA 780, lightning protection systems, and that way it's designed to capture the energy of a direct lightning strike to air terminals, parallel those conductor paths to the earth, and take the energy. We're talking about, so see, lightning goes, where's lightning? Where's it come from? How does it work out? Okay, here we go. Energy from the earth is going to be raised and brought into the atmosphere. Okay, the sun, so you have this energy. Now you have the energy raised in the atmosphere. It goes up, it gets cold. When it gets cold, guess what happens? And the, the molecules become ice. The ice particles start bouncing across each other, and they start breaking apart. part. And you get negative charges, positive charges. Now you get charges all over the place. Now you're having equalization of electrical charge. It's just the way things work out. Well, you have lightning. It goes from cloud to cloud, cloud to earth, earth to cloud, even from earth to space. It's called sp sprites. Okay, so there's a And you know what? Talk to anybody who knows lightning, they'll tell you, we really don't know how it works. So <laughs> let's understand something. Nobody <laughs> knows how it works. But we do have some concepts that if lightning is trying to equalize itself and there's a discharge, if it directly hits something, it's going to do whatever it's going to do to it. But it, we're trying to protect against electrical systems over voltage and equipment over voltage. When lightning doesn't strike the equipment, lightning strikes the earth, it induces energy. That energy that's being induced is seeking the path to the earth. And if it doesn't, it'll get side flashes and cause any causing fires.